Hello and welcome to the Omniscient Technologies webinar today. My name is Dion Wiggins. I'm the Chief Technology Officer of Omniscient Technologies and I'll be walking you through this presentation. Uh, the, today's presentation is entitled Make Machine Translation a Success with Language Studio version 4. This is our new platform that we released several months ago and we'll be walking through some of the key uh, tools, techniques, processes and also the basic billing model so that uh, you can create very quick, very high quality custom machine translation engines. So Language Studio is one of the leading machine translation and language processing platforms in the market today. Um, we've been around as a company uh, for quite some time. Uh, you may have known us previously uh, under the name of Asia Online. Uh, we recently rebranded uh, several months ago uh, as our business is growing and we're growing around the world in different markets, including our recently opened European office. Um, Language Studio is available as a cloud-based service and it's also available in-house or licensed for very high volumes or secure deployments. To give you an idea of the types of deployments, um, secure would be in something like government uh, and high volume. We have our largest customer today doing volumes of around 1.2 billion words a day every day. And that's billion with a B. So most of our customers uh, find it much easier to work in our cloud-based platform. Uh, we offer a very secure environment both via infrastructure and contracts. So any data that you provide to our system is very, very secure and remains exclusive yours, we take no rights into your data at all in any way. Um, we have a comprehensive and very friendly web user interface. We also have uh, programming interfaces, APIs for both batch and real-time translations. And uh, we also have our direct integration available for many TMS and CAT tools. Today we support more than 540 language pairs and we have three different engine types. And this is where things start to get a little bit more interesting. So first of all, uh, we have what we call industry engines. These are ready to use, just start translating. You don't need to do anything other than start pushing your files through the system. Uh, those industry engines are available in many different domains and industries, and I'll talk about those in a bit more detail shortly. Uh, then we have basic engines. This is the uh, lowest level of customization. It's fully automated. It's do-it-yourself. So you can upload your data and process on your own without any involvement or any expert guidance from the Omniscient team. Then we have our professional engines. Professional are the highest quality engines. They're guided by an expert and we manufacture and create a large amount of additional data. Um, we also have a fully programmatic workflow control system and we can through that enable specialized workflows whether it be for e-commerce, uh, with product catalogs, pricing, all those kinds of things, doing conversions, um, media, so we can handle things like subtitles, SRT files and many others, or electronic discovery, converting documents in and out of formats and so on. So if you need a specialized workflow, we can easily apply that into our system very quickly. Now, if we look at industry engines, industry engines are very powerful. They're a base engine and they are a base level of quality as such because there's no such thing as perfect quality for everybody. If I'm doing an automotive domain, for example, as an industry, is my domain more oriented towards, uh, let's say, marketing versus engineering manuals? So obviously there's going to be a very different writing style. So just at an industry level, you won't necessarily get the correct writing style you're looking for, but you'll get a very understandable translation with a focus on that specific industry. So for example, a life sciences engine would understand the term virus in the context of medicine as opposed to an IT engine where the context of virus would be very different. So we have 13 different industries today, and these are readily available in a wide range of language pairs. And the industries we currently support range from things like automotive to engineering, uh, news and media, politics and government, IT, life sciences, and so on. Now these are constantly being expanded across all of our language pairs, um, and we're aiming for several hundred engines available by the end of the year. We're already uh, just about at that level now, and we're going to shoot well past that, I believe. Now the good thing with industry engines is based on your language pair and industry, you can then use these engines as a base to build your own custom engine. So you've got a running start for a custom engine. 
So when we go to custom engines, we have two kinds of custom engine. We have a basic customization, which is a commodity level rapid customization. So there's a lot of uh, MT vendors in the market now that offer this do-it-yourself kind model, uh, where you upload your data and you get an engine that comes out. Now, of course, if your data is bad, we're not going to guarantee a good engine. It, it's really up to you. That's why it's do-it-yourself. You need to choose the right data the data that's suitable for your domain, high quality, without grammar, spelling, and so on. Obviously, the system is learning from your data. So um, one of the key challenges with do-it-yourself, of course, is it implies that you know how to do it yourself. And that's where our professional engines take on a new life and help you there. So typically, though, if you upload the right kind of data for your engine and not just upload a mixture of all kinds of content, um, we're typically seeing customers get anywhere from a 10 to a 40% productivity gain if they're a language service provider. Now, some start with a basic engine. If they want to go further, they can then move to a professional engine uh, simply by paying the difference in the customization costs. Now, a professional engine is expert driven. That means that our staff, our NLP experts, analyze your data they sit and meet with you online and understand what you're trying to do and what you're trying to achieve so we understand your goals. We then tailor a specific quality improvement plan to meet your specific needs. Now, as a result of that, we do a huge amount of data manufacturing where we create data specifically to match your requirements. Now, typically, any customer who builds these engines is frequently getting anywhere from two to 300% productivity gains. Now, this is a collaborative effort where we work together. It's not just throw it over the fence and we do it all, but we do probably at least 95% of the work. But there's certain things like um, coming back and managing terminology where obviously the customer has to make some decisions. So some of the tasks in there, for example, would be to analyze your existing translation memories and say, in your TMs, you've translated this term seven different ways. Here's your opportunity now to normalize it. Obviously, we can't make that choice for you, but we can present the seven different ways and let you choose which way you would prefer to have that represented. We can also do things like unknown term analysis, where we can analyze content that you're planning to translate and make sure all the terminology and vocabulary is covered. These are key steps into building high-quality translations. So if you compare the three different types, industry is immediately available. Uh, you only pay for the translation that you run through it. Now, uh, depending on uh, which type of engine, uh, translation costs a little bit more for a professional than it does for an industry, but our translation is based on a subscription and you're paying fractions of cents per word. It's uh, very, very competitive with anything else in the market in terms of costs. Um, I haven't given you specific pricing on the subscription because that will depend on the subscription level you have as to the specific cost. But it starts as low as uh, around $20 a month. Now, to customize an engine, to do a basic customization is $45, US so it's a very low rate. And to update that engine later with additional data, so basically retraining it when you're adding more translation memories, it's another $30 each time. For an expert guided, an expert guided engine, we have a lot of human time involved. We also have a lot of data manufacturing time involved, where we're frequently, as I mentioned, generating several billion words of training data to give you writing style and many other factors. So an expert guided engine costs uh, $1,500 to create. And automated training, if you just want to upload TMs to improve it over time, progressively, is the same as for a basic engine, $30. But for um, additional expert guidance, then there's an additional fee of $500. You get to choose. If, if you want to just update it with your data, you don't need us, then great, it's only $30. Now, all engines include the access to things like runtime rules, and these include glossaries, non-translatable terms, JavaScript, that you can just update the engine without any charge whatsoever. Now, just to be clear how these engines are, are built and sort of the difference in quality, we start with what we call language pair foundation data. On top of that, we add industry data. And this is industry specific, such as life science or IT or various other domains. So that's where we base our industry engines on. We then, on top of that, add client data to create a basic engine. Now, we don't do any uh, data manufacturing or anything like that at a basic level. 
Um, but once you move to a uh, professional engine, you start to get manufactured data. And this can be a huge body of data, often many hundreds of times bigger than the data you provide, but it's key to give you full control of vocabulary, terminology, and writing style, as well as managing all the unknown words. Now, Language Studio also has one key feature that fits the language service industry and many organizations very well. It's not uncommon for a customer to come to a language service provider without any historical translation memories or other language assets. So we have the ability to create a high quality custom engine with no data whatsoever. We can manufacture that data. We're the only MT provider that's able to do that today. So that addresses a huge portion of the market that is just starting out localizing their products, doesn't have existing data, but still wants to leverage MT. Of course, we can do different levels of data as well, and we have different processes depending on how much data is available. Now, one of the key features that Language Studio provides that is very unique is the ability to control writing style. So in the example on the screen right now, I'm showing a Spanish original source and that's been translated by two different English uh, target language engines. So Spanish input and English output. The first is targeted at business users. And you'll see that it has a much more sophisticated writing style, uh, much more sophisticated vocabulary. The second is for children's books. So it's very much simplified and dumbed down with simpler vocabulary for the age of maybe a six or a seven year old. Now that came from the same Spanish source sentence. So having this level of control is very, very important. If you're creating your own custom engines and you want to build an engine, let's say, for Honda. Honda is automotive, and Honda might be very similar to Toyota. But the next one that comes along is Ferrari and Rolls-Royce. And they have very, very different writing style. They also have different vocabulary and terminology, of course. But then even within Honda, you have motorbikes and you have cars. And within that, you have engineering manuals and marketing. So you don't want your marketing to read like an engineering manual, and you don't want your engineering manual to read like a marketing document. So having control of this writing style is very important. And this has the impact of having more better readability for users. It matches your target audience, so you don't have to rewrite sentences. You know, if you'd got the uh, business version here and you were trying to publish children's books, you'd have to rewrite the entire thing before you could publish it. So this results in fewer edits, and of course your editors are happy, and ultimately higher productivity, which turns into greater margins. So as an example of stylistic control, we have things like in automotive, you've got marketing, user manuals, engineering manuals, and so on. Um, for IT, you could have things like technical specifications, knowledge base, product reviews. Now, these are just some examples. Obviously, there are thousands of different writing styles, and you can create them to match right down to your own customer's writing style. Now, when it comes to terminology consistency, often uh, what we're finding is that machine plus human delivers much higher consistency in both writing style and terminology than human alone. So in this example, this was a English into Spanish automotive engineering manuals. And the human reference was taken from their existing human translations. And we ran the same sentence through the machine, and you can see the difference. Even the, the uh, smaller terminology that most wouldn't bother doing terminology management on is much more uh, normalized and, and straightforward. So this creates greater readability, and that means uh, that the manuals are received very, very well by end customers. So with that, I'm going to go to a demo of the platform, and I'm going to walk you through how Language Studio works overall. So this is our logon screen. And I'm just going to log in here as a trial user account that I created just before this call. OK, now this is our dashboard. So on the dashboard, the first thing you'll notice is in the top right-hand corner, the smiling face of Bessie, one of our lovely account managers. Um, once you have a professional engine, you get assigned an account manager automatically who will work with you to set up meetings with your uh, language studio experts and who will guide you through the overall customization process. Now, if you look at uh, below that, you'll see activity history. That shows everything that's gone on in this account from the day it was opened 
and you can walk your way through that account and uh, see exactly what happened, who did it, and when files were uploaded, when engines were released, released and so on. On the top bar here, you have your two different kinds of custom engines, basic and professional. And this shows here that we have one basic and one professional that is in the data gathering stage. So this is at the stage where we're gathering data, we're uploading it, but it hasn't been submitted to start training yet. The next column over says we have engines processing, so right now there's none processing. And by processing, we're talking about cleaning the data, analyzing it for good segments and bad segments. If it's um, a, a professional engine that's doing additional tasks and processing, such as crawling and various other tasks, um, then we move on to training, and then we go to diagnostic review, and finally you have a button where you can publish your engine, where you simply click, I'm happy with this engine, publish it, and it goes live, and you can start translating. Now, I'm going to go to start with and go to the translate menu. Now, at the moment, I don't have any custom engines because I've just opened this account. So I haven't published a single engine, and you'll see that represented here in just a moment. So first of all, I'm going to choose my language pair, and you'll see my custom engine is, is completely blank. But on industry engines, we can go over here and choose, for example, English to Spanish. And if I come back now, I have a complete list of available industry engines that I can start translating with right now. So if I go to Travel Guides, I can simply select a file, and I can say, right, let's go down to uh, Workshop down here, pick my file, okay, and I can say Save. Now that file has been uploaded. I can submit many files all at once. Now we support all the common formats, things like TMX, XLIF, and so on. Um, but this particular screen you may never actually use if you're using a translation management system such as MemoQ or SDL or XTM or any of the others that we're integrated with. So once you're ready, you simply click Translate, it submits the job, and it will go and start translating. And that goes into a queue, and in a few minutes' time, you'll get that uh, particular translation done. Now, when you first start translating, of course, it has to load your engine we have thousands of engines, it's not practical to have them all loaded 24 hours a day. That just takes a minute or two, and then it starts translating at very high speed. So we're not going to wait for that. We're going to move on to the customization. So if I go to custom engines here, I'm going to create a new custom engine. OK, so here we have our um, custom engine project manager, and this is the wizard. OK, so we start by choosing our language pair. So here I've got English-Spanish, but I've got all these other ones here as well. So I can choose any number of language pairs across the whole 540 spectrum of language pairs that we have today. I can then roll down here and I can choose an industry engine. So which industry engine do I want to base my particular custom engine on? So if I go to example automotive, and I'm going to say, OK, I want to do Mexican-Spanish. Okay. And I'm going to do a demo engine, and it's going to be marketing. OK. Now, you can put a bit more detailed um, description and some other information here, or you can come back and do that later. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to add my details here. OK. Now, I can choose at this point whether I want a basic or a professional custom engine. So if I click on the overview, it shows me information about what is in a basic and what is in a professional. Okay, So that's all there. I can also go and compare the features. So do I have web access and, and so on? All of these features are available. As we start to get further down the list, you get to see things like, OK, an account, a dedicated account manager, uh, data manufacturing, writing style control. So you can see what they're available on versus basic and professional. So I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to say, right, I'm going to make myself a basic engine. So I click on Create. And it's going to tell me I'm going to deduct $45 from your account. And I'm going to proceed. Okay, so that just takes a few moments to create a basic engine. It's setting up the data now, and then it's going to move on into the full custom engine project manager.
where we can take it to the next stage. So what you're seeing on the screen now is the Custom Engine Project Manager. And it's got a lot of fields and information that you can fill in to provide additional detail. You can also upgrade to a professional engine at any time. Okay, so you'll notice down here uh, information like uh, what is the quality of the source text. And here we can choose a, a range of qualities from one to five, one being pretty bad, like user-generated content, perhaps hotel reviews, or five being very high quality, like life sciences. Um, are there any known issues? Now, the reason we ask that is often there are broken source formats that are very obvious people know about them already. An example from one customer recently was their content management system was breaking all the trademarks. And so product names were ending with capital T, capital M, where they formerly had a trademark. We can put a very simple rule in that can repair that at runtime, and then you get a higher quality translation. So please do tell us about those things. You have your target audience, so who's it going to, like engineers, the writing style, engineering manuals, and any other general guidance you can provide. Now down here on this one, we get to unknown words. Now like any uh, human, there is no machine that knows every single word in the world. So both humans and machines are going to have unknown words from time to time. So one of the options we have in this platform is you can connect to a third-party translation service just for an individual word and see what they think it is. So the engine detects it, doesn't know it, and you can ask Google, Bing, or, or a number of other third parties that you can integrate um, what they think this single word is. Not the whole sentence, so your privacy is protected, but just one word. Now, that only happens the first time, then after that it's stored in the database and can be called on um, next time that word is encountered. And periodically you can export that list and review it and add that to your engine properly. Okay, so next we have the quality improvement plan. So if you have a professional engine, after the first meeting with your language studio experts, this screen will have a documented step-by-step -step plan of what we're going to do and who's going to do it. Okay. You can upload your own tuning and test data if uh, you're a little bit more technical and want to do that. Alternatively, once you've uploaded your basic TMs, it, we can extract data from that and automatically assign it here. And once you have your initial engine, you can do your diagnostic translations on this screen straight away before publishing it. Now, we have full version control. And that means that you can go backwards and forwards between versions of your engine. Now, at any time, if you're not sure what to do or how to do it, you'll notice there's a tab up here. You can click on this tab. Every major section has a guide that walks you through step by step. So I'm going to go into version one of the engine, and I'm going to move straight to the data catalog. Now, if we're doing a professional engine, it's very important that you upload the source content, if it's available, that you're planning to translate. Now, when you do that, we're able to then analyze for all, all the source content and say, we know these terminology, uh, terminology we, we don't know another set of terminology. We're not confident that we're doing a good job. Can you validate these terms that we're less confident on? So we might know real estate, but we know it as real and estate versus the term real estate, so it translates poorly. So these are the areas where the engine can detect. I'm not sure on these. Please help me out and confirm and correct it if it's wrong. Um, now, there are cases where you don't have the customer's data yet. So when you don't have the customer's data, what we're able to do is we're able to go and crawl the customer's website or similar content and bring that down. So you can upload a list of URLs, you can put them here, and we can download that content and then analyze that content for terminology and many other factors. We can do the same thing with keywords. So that's source language. Then we move across to the bilingual content, which is the target language, sorry, before the target language. And we can add uh, normal translation memories, so anything from TMX, XLIF, Tab Pair, um, Excel, or CSV. We also support, of course, as part of XLIF, SDL, XLIF files. Now, if you're a more advanced user and you've already built some engines, you might want to select files you've already uploaded previously. Okay, so you've got that option as well so you can get files from other engines. Um, if you've uh, already done MT post-editing on this engine, then you can upload post-edited MT. 
and we treat that a little bit differently. We weight it more heavy so that uh, when we uh, train the engine again, it learns from your corrections and doesn't keep making the same mistakes. You can upload a runtime glossary and you, uh, in another section, but you can also upload a simple glossary here ranging from uh, the, all these standard file types. And then finally, non-translatable terms is just a simple list of terms that you do not want translated. So these are brands and product names and, and people names and things like that. Then we go to target language. Now, most companies don't have that much target language content, but if they do have it, then uh, we'd, we'd like to get that because that helps us with writing style. Now, we have a pool of uh, many billions of words of target language data in all our target language pairs that we can mine for writing style. So we're able to analyze your content and we're able to find similar content and use that as stylistic guides. And we often manufacture several billion words of content. We can also go out and crawl for similar content, just like we did on the source language, and gather that data. Okay, so very quickly we can find data that matches writing style, manufacture billions of words of content. That way it's reading when you publish it out the other side of your translation as close as possible to your target publication mode. Okay, then we go to training. So we start with uh, automated uh, for a basic engine. If you had a professional engine, you can go straight to uh, expert guided training, and that will be uh, required the first time around because it's a professional engine. Um, now, you'll notice another tab here, training data. That's a little bit different to your data catalog. So data catalog is the data that you uploaded only. The training data is data that you uploaded after it was processed. So sometimes uh, you lose data in that process because it's not uh, high quality. So we check the quality of alignments. We check the quality of the content. Um, you know, if it's just a bunch of numbers or a bunch of dates, it's not useful for learning. So we throw away those segments. Um, if it's a mismatched segment, we can detect that automatically and discard that and so on. Um, also, the data we manufactured will be shown on the screen once you've uh, done your data manufacturing process uh, through our Language Studio experts. So we do about 95% of that work. We make it very, very easy. We have online meetings via GoToMeeting, and those meetings are saved as notes in our notes section, um, and really it's that simple. Now, once we're ready, we simply submit for training. Okay, our basic custom engines going into queue for training, and in a couple of hours you will have your very first custom engine. Assuming you've uploaded good data, you'll have a good quality custom engine. Now, you can see straight away at the top here, this uh, little breadcrumb bar has changed. So you'll see it's already gone to training. Now, this has gone very quickly because I didn't provide any training data. So very quickly that will come out the other side to diagnostic review. And I'll get a nice email saying it's ready to test with a few more instructions. Okay, it's really that simple. Now I'm going to go back to um, the dashboard now, and I just want to show um, a couple more areas uh, to highlight. Uh, we have the job queue. So when you're translating, this is where you can see all the jobs that have been translated or are translating now. So here's two jobs that have been run. The job I ran earlier and a test job just to, uh, just before the uh, session started, uh, just when I set up the account. And you can set up all your different criteria here for what kinds of engines you want to see the queue on and so on. Okay. Um, the other feature on the dashboard is integration. So here you, you can integrate on a number of different ways. Very shortly we're going to be releasing our Language Studio Desktop Connector. This is a new way to connect with many different desktop platforms. Um, and submit via uh, Microsoft Windows straight from the desktop. Um, we also have uh, developer toolkits for both .NET and Oracle Java, and we have a REST interface, and we also have um, some sample code. For example, we have a tool that looks very similar to Google Translate that allows you to create your own web page on your own network and basically uh, have a nice submission tool that submits and downloads documents and texts and web pages uh, just like you'd be used to on the internet but keeping it in your own network. Um, we also have a sample source code that does what we call drop folders. So you can uh, 
have a folder monitored and whenever you put a file in that folder, it automatically sends that to translation and downloads it again and puts it back in another folder. Uh, we're also integrated with a range of third-party products such as uh, translation management systems from uh, Atrill with Deja Vu, Global Site, Kilgram MOQ, Memsource Cloud, STL Studio, World Server, uh, TransPerfect Global Link and XCM. And a number of other third-party products also work with us such as Abbey, uh, Catalyst, Plunet, uh, Veda Semantics, XTRF and so on. So there's quite a good range there. So I'm going to go back to uh, my slides now and uh, continue the presentation. Just a few more slides. Um, so why do you want to use Language Studio? Well, quite simply, the very first reason is it offers the highest return on investment. Very, very quickly you get um, ROI because we offer productivity rates of 2 to 300% with a professional engine. These are at levels that uh, no one else has at all. Okay. Um, we have the fastest time to achieve ROI, of course, because we're building very high quality engines. Um, lowest total cost of translation. Once you create high quality MT, your costs of editing and other human costs come way down. And because we automate nearly everything and, and uh, have a whole lot of human guided or expert guided, but high quality tools in the back end, what you find is that it's the least time and effort to publish overall. Now we have uh, the option of building an engine with no data if you don't have any, and that's very unique to us. But yet at the same time, we give you complete control of the platform. And as I mentioned, you have uh, do-it-yourself and expert guided professional engines. In terms of billing models, we start at about uh, $20 and go up from there. And that's a monthly fee. It's based on a subscription. And we offer very, very low cost uh, basic custom engines at $45 and professional at $1,500. Now, when you translate with a uh, human workflow, so it's machine plus human, we've been working with a number of language service providers and over many years we've found a very optimal workflow. And just by changing this minor process, it's uh, very, very clear to see as much as a 50% performance and productivity difference, um, even with the same MT. So it's very simple. Um, it's on the, on the concept that people do better if they're focused on one task. So if you're focused on post-editing and then you switch to translation because occasionally you'll get a segment that's not good, especially on a, a younger engine that's less mature, switching between editing and translation, editing and translation slows a human down very, very quickly. So the way to do this is if you're using something like, let's say, MemoQ, your editor goes through and he looks at a segment and he says, right, can I edit this or not? they have three seconds to make the decision. If in that three seconds they cannot make that decision, then they skip to the next segment, don't touch it. Once they've finished the file, the file goes to a human translator, and that human translator can then uh, translate like normal, just the segments that weren't edited, and then it goes back through the editing process to proof, so it's your normal TEP process. Now, this resolves several big problems. Okay, first of all, Many are saying MT plus human is giving lower quality results because what they have is their post editor retranslates on a number of occasions and of course nobody is editing the post editor. You can't edit your own work. As a result, errors creep in. Okay. The, um, the second thing is the billing model, um, if it's applied in a very simple way, which is pay them by the word the exact same way you would traditionally but based on performance. So different engines perform at different rates. So for example, if you were paying nine cents a word, okay, and, um, and you uh, were processing 3,000 words a day, you can do very simple math. Okay, if you are now doing three times as fast, you should be paying three cents a word, so your editor gets the same money, but then add a five to 10% increase on top of that. And that covers the review time, and miraculously gets rid of a lot of complaints. At the moment, people are earning more. Um, obviously, they don't complain as much, um, so you're sharing a bit of the benefit you're gaining. But the other thing that this does is, with this three-second rule, they only get paid as an editor for the segments that they edit. So they're leaning towards, I want to edit this, versus no, send it to a translator. But then they can't come back to you and say, oh, the machine translation was terrible, 
if they've accepted it as good quality. So there's a, a clearly defined boundary here. So you end up with happier editors because they're only editing the good content, and the translators edit the ones that don't go so well, and you end up with a very, very high throughput as a result. We've seen as much as 50% performance difference. Now, we also have um, a uh, maturity model that uh, is the topic of another presentation that's available on our website now, so I'm not going to go through this today. I just wanted to uh, make you aware of it. So this starts from reactive, moving to repetitive, managed, strategic, and then optimizing. And this is a very important concept to work your way up through the maturity model. So we, uh, if you're interested in that, please do go to our website and download that presentation as well. Now, one of the last things I want to talk about today is time to achieve ROI. Now, I mentioned this earlier, um, but this is an example from one of our customers doing English to Hungarian in life sciences. So their typical margin uh, was 25%. On their very first project, they were able to increase their margins to 45%. After project three, it was at 50. They've done more than 20 projects, and so now it's 60 to 70% margins. So this shows the type of difference that can be applied here. Now, don't just take our word for this. Um, have a look at some of our case studies. Um, have a look at some of our, our reference customers, some of our partners. There's a whole lot of uh, very interesting comments from them. As an example, uh, Echo Communications, they adopted the MT maturity model and have been uh, rapidly accelerating their way up it. And uh, they had some negative experience with other MT in the past. They tried our platform, and after a very short period, they did exceptionally well. We were able to do a project for them last year of 600,000 words, and they were able to have it customized, translated, and human proofread and back to the customer in two weeks for all 600,000 words, just to give you an idea how this can change what you can offer your customers. Um, another customer that's been very happy with us is um, Scott Bass from Advanced Language Translation. And um, he's treating us, how many of our customers are treating us, as their MT department. And that works very, very well. They are now able to take on much larger projects than in the past, and uh, they're able to be much more competitive as a result. So the last thing for today, I'd just like to briefly mention our webinar that's coming up on November 24th. Okay, this is next week. It's a very, very unique webinar um, with some very interesting people. We have uh, Professor Philip Kuhn, who is the chief scientist of Omniscient Technologies, but he's also a professor of computer science at John Hopkins University. Some of you may have heard of the Moses open source platform. He is the original uh, creator of the Moses platform and is still very much involved. Uh, we have Andrew Ruffner, uh, Omniscient CEO. We have Kirsten Burns, who is the founder and CEO of Burns Language Consulting and Florian Fays, who is the co-founder and managing director at Slater. So if you're interested in uh, that particular webinar, that's a very popular webinar. We already have several hundred people registered for that. Um, please follow the URL below, and uh, we can uh, get you registered for that for next week. And uh, with that, I'd uh, like to thank you for joining the webinar today. And uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. Uh, my email address is dion.wiggins at omniscient.com, um, or any of our team will also be very happy to help you. So thank you for joining today, and we hope to see you online soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.